is that there are circumstances where you cannot avoid people. And in fact, you don't want to totally inoculate against other people because that is when you get an opportunity to actually practice your virtue. I think Aristotle says that no virtue is uh, developed in a vacuum, which basically means if you want to develop the virtue of detachment, the virtue of stoicism, the virtue of being strong in the face of, of, of temptation and irritation, then you want, you're going to have to be around people so that you can practice that. Yo, Elliot. While on my journey, beforehand, I used to make decisions based on society. For example, doing a degree I hated just to get a typical nine to five job. Chasing women think it will make me happy. Now I'm able to detach from those situations. However, what are your thoughts on detaching from extended family? They drain my energy and they love drama. I find that if I were to distance myself from them, it is not out of disrespect, but for me to live a stronger life. Uh, this is my first question. So Jazz, uh, when you say detach yourself from extended family, my assumption is that you just spend less time with them. And that is probably one of the best ways to preserve the sanctity of your mind, which is to stay away from people that disturb you, right? Now, there are times when you have to be around them. And in those situations, you detach by not being attached. You detach by allowing them to say and do the things that they do, but not allowing it to affect you, right? So there's the physical distance that you can create, which only makes sense. I'm listening to a book right now called um, The Imitation of Christ. It's an amazing book. And it basically just has uh, different, each page is like a different passage with ideas on how to live a sanctifying life. And one of them is to stay by yourself, stay away from people that are a temptation, stay away from people that disturb you, stay away from people in general. That's one of the, you know, one of the general pieces of advice is that in order to sanctify your life, it is better that you distance yourself from as many people as possible. You know, stay away from from people because people will trip you up now it goes on because it's not as simple as that right and in fact that's only part of the deal the other half of the deal and what's explained there and what i'm trying to explain to you is that there are circumstances where you cannot avoid people and in fact you don't want to totally inoculate against other people because that is when you get an opportunity to actually practice your virtue I think Aristotle says that no virtue is uh, developed in a vacuum, which basically means if you want to develop the virtue of detachment, the virtue of stoicism, the virtue of being strong in the face of, of, of temptation and irritation, then, you want, then you're going to have to be around people so that you can practice that. So when I read your question, you know, you want to know my thoughts on detaching from extended family. It doesn't matter if it's extended family or your friends or even, you know, the people in your home. Uh, it's about this way for all people. It doesn't matter who it is. And it's not to say that you should denigrate your family or don't, or don't love your family or don't be there for your family. But don't be attached to them. Don't need them. Don't need their approval. And don't make them need you. And that's another one also, right? One of the, one of the, one of the ways that we get caught up is in, in, the, in liking being needed, you know? And the more you can free yourself from other people's needing of you, the more you will have the space to sanctify your life. So I don't see anything wrong with that. In fact, I see it as a, as a step towards sanctifying yourself. You say, you know, living a stronger life. It's the same thing. You say a stronger life. I like that, right? It's the same thing with if you're trying to lose weight, right? If you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to lose fat, you're trying to get shredded, you're going to stay away from the near temptation or the near occasion of sin. You're going to stay away from 
McDonald's, right? You're not going to go to Krispy Kreme. You're not going to go to the places where there's a good chance that you're going to be tempted and that you might slip. And so with your family, it's the same thing. If you're trying to, if you're trying to sanctify your soul, you don't want to be in a place that's going to tempt you into anger, into frustration, into sadness, into apathy, into fear, into guilt, into shame. All of these things are like eating junk food for the soul, right? You get in those situations and those, that, that junk starts heaping itself on you. So you want to stay away. But if you can't stay away from the food, let's say you're like, you know, you're obese and you're trying to lose weight, but you go to work. And when you go to work, it's like, you know, uh, every Friday's donut day or some shit like that. And you can't help it. It's like, yo, everybody's chowing down on donuts and hot cocoa. Uh, <laughs> when you when you go to work on Friday, well, that's the day that you get to exercise your virtue. That's the day that you get to be in the environment. You get to be around the stuff, but you get to exercise your strength, right? And so when you're in a situation with your extended family and they are irritating, they are tempting you, they are trying to goad you and throw you off, that is all the more an opportunity to say, bless your heart, bless their heart. It's okay. Just smile. Just smile and take it. One of the things that uh, the author says in Imitation of Christ is like to allow yourself to be humiliated without having to defend yourself. Allow yourself to be in the circumstances where maybe they're saying things that are wrong. Maybe they're doing, thing, doing things that um, irritate you, but being able to just withstand it, being able to just not a problem and in fact he go he says even further pray for them not in a not in a uh antagonistic way like you know you're you guys are retarded so i'm gonna pray for you meaning like i really and truly do feel sad for you i wish you the best i hope you can overcome this degenerate way that you're living or thinking or acting or being um and i and i and i wish the best for you you know in the south they say bless bless her heart <laughs> bless his heart so bless their heart and then keep it moving dude i hope that helps done where's my water jazz is that helpful cool man yeah And are those good practical tips? Are those good practical tips rather than going in there with anger or distraught? Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to show up there anticipating their the problems. You don't want to go in there anticipating that it's going to be tough. You go in there. This is one of the things that you're going to learn throughout this program because I know you're fairly new here. One of the things you are going to learn is to simply allow yourself to be. And one of, the, one of the best ways to allow yourself to be is to avoid projecting into the future. Don't think too much about what's going to happen, how it's going to be when you get there and things of that nature. Just allow yourself to show up. In the gospel, Jesus speaks to his disciples, right? I, I don't quote the Bible that great. I just remember the stories. He's talking to his students, right? So he tells them, listen, guys, you need to go out there and... Uh, and teach you need to go out there and tell them you know tell the people repent for the for the kingdom of the lord is here right so he's got a message he's got a message go out there and there's a few pieces of advice that he gives people he says number one he says don't think about what you're going to say before you get there don't think about it before you get there get there and you'll be led by the holy spirit don't try to pre-plan don't try to set yourself up just get there, and when you get there, you'll know what to do. One of the things I like to say to the guys is don't do it until you're doing it, right? Don't do something until you're actually doing it. Don't spend too much time. And then the next thing he says is, and if, if people don't accept you as you are, they don't receive your message, he said just dust off 
dust off your clothes, dust off your shoes, knock the dust off your shoulders. He says, no worries. Then just bounce. Just get out of here. Just leave. Go somewhere else. And that's really a, that's a way to live our lives as it relates to dealing with, with all people in all situations. So I think you're going to do great, dude. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. And then me and my team, we'll get back to the details and see if you qualify. I hope to see you at our next session. Done.